Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be going over how to use decision trees in R to help us guide us with our trading decisions. So in this tutorial, I'll be grabbing daily data for an ETF. I'm gonna add some technical indicators. I'm gonna use the RSI as my main trading signal. So I'm gonna be splitting the data in half so that I have short positions and I have long positions. And then I'll be holding for a certain amount of days. And then given the parameters and the technical indicators, I'm gonna add whether the trade was profitable or not. And then I'll run the decision tree, which will find combinations, which will guide us on which technical indicators to use and at what levels. So we start by reading in these packages. I'm gonna get daily data for the diamonds ETF. Next, I'll be adding some technical indicators, which include the RSI, the daily return, the percentage to the 20 EMA, a volatility indicator, the return on open. I'll also be adding the up days in the previous five trading days, along with the down days in the last five trading days. For a closing signal, I'm just gonna hold this stock for three days and calculate the return. So I'll go ahead and run this block. The next step is to split our data for overbought and oversold levels. And for these, I'll be using the RSI. When the RSI is greater than 70, that'll be overbought. And when the RSI is less than 30, that'll be oversold. So I'll go ahead and run these lines. The next step is to indicate whether the trade was profitable or not. So I'll be adding a one if it's profitable, zero if it's not. So I'll go ahead and add these as columns. And again, by having these two tables, I'll be able to sell short if the RSI is greater than 70 and buy the ETF if the RSI is less than 30. I'll be holding for three days and then these columns indicate whether the trade was profitable or not. Let's go to the next step. So for both of these XTS objects, I need to convert these into a data frame. So that's what these two lines are doing. I'm only going to use certain columns. So I'll be excluding the date column, the open column, the volume column, and I'm just gonna narrow down to a couple of select columns for each of these data frames. So I'll go ahead and run these two lines. All right, in this next step, I need to split our data for a training set and a validation set. So I'll be running the decision tree on our training data set, and then I'm gonna use the signals it generated on the validation set and see how accurate it is. So the way I'm doing the split is by using sample split. It's gonna split by the ratio, which is 70%, and it's gonna do a random split. So I'll be doing that for both data sets for our oversold and overbought levels. And I'll go ahead and run this block. So now we need to set our decision tree classifier, and this is what the decision tree will optimize for. So in this case, I'll be setting this to our profitable column, which will be our main focus. I want to ensure that this tree is searching for combinations in which our trades are profitable, and we set our is profitable column to a factor. So I'll run these two lines. We run our part to get our decision tree on both data sets. I'll be using those predictions from our training data set on our validation set. We need to set our is profitable column to a factor class. So I'll be running these two and then we'll use a confusion matrix to display our results. So I'll go ahead and run this for our oversold levels. So let's scroll up. All right, so for our oversold table, we see that the accuracy was 66%, and that's using the signals we got from our training data set on our validation data set. So the way you read this is we have good predictions and poor predictions, and we focus on this section here for reference and prediction. So for good predictions, we use zero and zero, indicate that six of these trades were not gonna perform well, which resulted as true. And the good trades indicated by one and one are 18 good trades of which 18 were profitable. All right, so for the poor predictions, we have zero one, which our prediction was not to take a trade, but it was actually a profitable trade. And we also have one and zero, which means the prediction was to take the trade, but it was actually unprofitable. So its accuracy is approximately 67% on the oversold. So that's how you read this confusion matrix. Now let's continue on with the script. Now let's visualize this decision tree. So for the oversold table, this is how the results came in. So the first pick on the decision would be to compare the percentage to the 20 EMA. If it's less than a negative four and a half percent, then it will go on to the next level. But if it's not less than four and a half percent, then it will take the trade and then it compares the same metric, but this time, if it's greater than or equal to negative 7.3%, it will not take the trade. Otherwise, it indicates that we should. And these are the only two steps for the oversold table. Now let's take a look at the overbought table. 
So as you can see, these can get very complex. And in this example, it looks like we use the majority, if not all the technical indicators. And once we have this tree, we can code an algorithm for it, including all these steps. Now let's plot an equity curve on the validation set. So I'll go ahead and close this out. I'm gonna duplicate my validation tables. I'm gonna add the predictions as a column. And I'm gonna subset my validation table to only includes those where the predictions were one or true. I'm gonna add an empty column for the PNL or the return. I'm gonna add the percentage returns as a column. So that was for the oversold. Now for the overbought. Now we can plot our PNL or returns. So let's go take a look at that plot. So this is the cumulative sum of returns for our oversold levels or table, which looks fairly good. Now let's take a look at the overbought PNL. So if we zoom in on that plot, so the returns look better on the oversold table or predictions than our overbought levels or signals, given the parameters we chose. Well guys, this concludes the video. I'll leave a link down in the description area where you can find the script so you can tweak the parameters or indicators. Please let me know what you guys think. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.